Hey render lovers, another angle, 3D visuals here to play with some squishy stuff in the new plugin for 3ds Max called Dynamo. It's a cloth simulator, it's awesome, let's go! So, as always, let's start off with the blank scene. I have a super simple plane here, um, 4 meters by 6 meters. I extruded two sides and chamfered everything and made a very simple studio setup. The first thing we're going to do is create a little box. Let's make this box one meter cubed. As always, I'm working in millimeters. Um, let's edit this, take off the top. and shell the inside maybe zero out and 50 mil inside looks pretty good to me um, next we will do is make a geosphere um, I don't know what size but 233 looks pretty good to me we'll convert this to an editable poly and add our Dynamo modifier on top. Once we've added the modifier, we can of course go back and change our edit poly. So we just type in Dynamo modifier, and already if we do an interact, we can see how this works. There it is, it's bouncing nice. It's got a bit of softness to it. And throw it around, punch it, give it some nice wrinkles. It's working well. So let's um, hit reset, go back to our editable poly, select the object. Um, actually, let's not do that, let's do it an easy way. Let's get rid of our dynamo modifier. Let's copy this above. Um, copy 36 times, no, 35 times. So now we've just got 35 balls. Um, we can select all of them and collapse them. We can turn this back into an editable poly, put our dynamo back on top, put this on top of our box here, and I'm going to leave the settings as default, and if we do a quick bank, bake, um, we should see the balls fall into this um, box and sort of crush one another, theoretically, and Play around. Let's actually do an interact, see how that works. <laughs> Bit funny, but not too bad. Looks like we've just made some peas. Let's stop that, reset it. Um, so one thing we'll, we'll have to do is change our steps per frame, probably to about half frame. Inter iterations for now can probably go to about four because that wasn't too slow. And now we can start playing around with our settings of our um, cloth sphere, or spheres here. So this mass, let's um, make it quite light, so it's like a soft ball, and it's not so stiff either, so 0.1. And then let's divide the stiffness by 10, so 0 0.0025. And then, because we want this to act like an inflatable inflated ball um, that sort of pushes out a bit and pushes towards one another, we're going to turn the pressure up to 1.1. So, if we do another, um, let's do a bake this time and see how it works. Still a bit funny. Now, what we'll have to do to get cleaner results is give our box um, maybe some more edges. So, I'm just going to isolate the box, um, do an edit poly and just put in some supports. This will sort of give the um, box a bit more geometry for the collisions to happen in. Um, maybe some on the sides as well. And now we can do a turbo smooth on top of that. 
and now we have um, plenty of uh, vertices. So hopefully, if I reset this and do a bake, it'll be a bit cleaner. You can already see that it's a little bit slower, and yes, it is cleaner. <laughs> those um, those peas are starting to intersect quite nicely and interact with one another, and that's a funny little um, that's a funny little interaction happening there. I think I'll just um, make my edit poly. I think I'll actually delete my polysphere. I'll copy this, delete it. We'll do another geosphere. And this time we'll make it a bit smaller. We'll keep it at 150 radius. That way we can just fit a few more balls inside. Um, let's just hide everything else. Do another copy 35 times. Okay. Once again, collapse. Editable poly and paste. So let's reset that. Um, just to be clear, one of the reasons why I'm sort of making many balls inside one object and then doing the dynamo on top rather than instancing many balls with the dynamo on top is it seems that when I do that, so I'll just show you an example. When I have a box, for instance, and I put a dynamo on top. When I have multiple instances of this, so if I have four of those, I don't want to do it right now because it'll crash. But what I have noticed is that if I click on this and press bake or interact, the scene will just crash. Max will instantly just disappear. There'll be no warning or anything. So obviously I want to avoid that. So my best um, method for playing with multiple objects with Dynamo is to um, have them all under the same object. I'm not sure if this is an error or if I'm doing something wrong, but so far um, it's been the safest and cleanest way for me. So we can, um, let's give this a nice little glass material, hey, so we can see what's happening inside there. So I like to use the Corona defaults. Um, let's use the clear distorted glass. So now we can see what's happening inside there. Um, I might give this another turbo, whoops, another turbo smooth, a bit cleaner that way. Um, Let's align this with the scene. Yep. And I might just create a camera as well. Um, select camera, make a new Corona camera. And all I want to do here is make that vertic vertical um, tilt. Um, and let's do a save. Um, let's um, reset our sim sim simulation and do an interactive Corona render. Bit bright, but that glass is looking nice and wavy and cool. The balls <laughs> are casting a cool shadow. Um, how's that? Minus five. I have a daytime scene happening in this render. Um, I just have a sky eliminating the scene, no other lighting. Um, super basic stuff and interact. So you can see that they inflate a little bit. Oh, they're stacking really nicely and boom, then they, uh, <laughs> the pressure gets too high and they start to collapse on one another. Ooh, and that's nice uh, dynamo is really impressive this is amazing so if we stop the interact see how that looks yes perfect we're starting to get these Voronoi sort of effects happening very good very good um, I think what I'll do now is just give these peas these balls a material the way I will do that is a Corona legacy material I will do a Corona multi-map, plug that in there, turn this to one, make this five, make this five. That just gives our color here a bit of variation. I'll do a bit of a candy-like purplish pinkish thing because that's so trendy at the moment. 
and we can apply this to our material and let's see how that looks. Oh, one thing I forgot to do was change this to mesh element and yes, now they're nice and random. Pretty happy with that. That's uh, so simple. Dynamo is whew, very impressive so far. Now let's push it a little bit further. What I would like to do is to simulate these balls dropping and then have something come down and crush them. Uh, so we get more um, pressure pushing on them, more of that Voronoi effect, more of them squeezing against the glass. Um, so what we can do is, let's just copy this box. Um, I think I'll just get rid of all of this stuff. Um, and I will make it 950 by 950 by 150. So how does that work? A bit less, 920, yeah, 920 works. Basically, we just want it to fit in like the lid of a glass jar, so it's going to come down here. I might um, reset our sim. And I will animate this. Let's keep it super simple. I will have it up here to begin with. Let's make this a... Um, I don't know, what do you want? 200? Yeah, pretty good. 200 frames. So, uh, I need to simulate this again. Let's turn off the auto key and do a save and bake. It should be pretty fast. You can see they're all getting crushed. They all fall apart then. I love the way that they twirl around like a rope. That'd be a good way to simulate a rope actually, using Dynamo. Perfect. So, now that we've got our simulation done for 200 frames, we know exactly when the lid should come down. So maybe the lid should come down at about 175. So let's go back to one, auto key, set that key, go to 175, take this guy, maybe to there, and then another 25 frames, it can be there. Yeah, cool. So let's make this 400 frames so we get a bit of crushing happening. Um, now we'll have to do the same thing. Edit poly. Let's just chamfer these edges. Ah, nope. I need to give this glass a lid. So I need to cap holes. That's better. And now chamfer. Chamfer at 10. Very good. And let's just do one turbo smooth. Um, so that goes there. Great. And let's just make sure our. Uh, it does. Okay, so let's just leave our lid there so it doesn't collide with our balls. So, what we need to do is hit bake again. Now the great thing about Dynamo is it automatically interacts with everything in your scene. Um, you can change that here. Objects to include automatic, all objects or Dynamo objects. I don't know what the difference between auto, automatic and all objects is. I've been using automatic. Maybe it chooses the smaller things in the scene and uh, <laughs> maybe that's something I should figure out. But for now it's been working for me perfectly. You can see how fast this is. This is real time at the moment. Well, not real time, but I'm not speeding up this simulation for your benefit. Um, that is just going really fast. And here comes the lid. It's going to slow down and crush. Whoa! <laughs> it pushed a balloon out, and now the balloon's falling and bouncing. Ah, oh, that's so good. It's so comedic. I didn't expect that. Dynamo is really clean and neat. It uh, Usually that would pop and fuck off to the other side of the scene, but this time that just 
got its shape back and bounced back into position. Oh, look at that. Ah. Here comes the lid. Whoop. Oh, there was a couple of uh, popped balloons there. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. But that's basically our simulation finished. Um, let's see how that looks in the render. Oh, we'll go back to our camera. Oh, yep, there's a few little errors there. So after a few minutes of playing around, I got it to be super stable. Um, I don't know what the issues were, but basically I made the box, got rid of the lid, shelled it, um, added some seams um, and some chamfers, did a poly, uh, a turbo smooth, and then I, I pushed the glass in a little bit, just so when the, the balls are pressed up against the glass they're not actually intersecting the glass a little bit so pushing doing this negative uh, one millimeter push just meant that there was no ugliness there um, but the the simulation worked beautifully as you can see the uh, compressor comes down nicely Oof, pushes everything to do this Voronoi really well and then I got the little comedic um, single ball being forced out and landing down and there we have it our final squishy balls animation brought to you by dynamo which sadly is no longer in production so this video was a waste of time hopefully you saw my note uh, in the video description but i had already made this video i figured it was fun to make and fun to share so maybe you can somehow get inspired um, and play around in 3ds max i don't know maybe you can find dynamo out there somewhere still who knows Good luck and thanks for watching guys. Bye.